if you take the top receivers of the last, I don't know, call it 20 years, the top paid receivers of the last 20 years, how many top paid, top 10 or so receivers was the highest paid that went on to help the team win the Super Bowl? There aren't well, very, can, there aren't very there many. There aren't a lot. There aren't. Because it's usually Kansas City winning, right? And it's, they never have a top think, dog. Think about it. Yeah, it's Cooper usually. Cup wasn't getting paid. Even, right? even when Tyreek was there, he was the 13th highest paid receiver when he was in Kansas City. You go to New England. None of those guys. Chris Hogan was about the most expensive paid receiver in New York. I mean, in, in, in New, England's New England's little run that they had. It was Chris Hogan. It wasn't Julian Edelman. It wasn't Amendola. Chris Hogan made money, but he wasn't, he was like, at that time, he was like the 35th highest paid wide receiver. You got to go all the way back to like myself and Marvin Harrison mm -hmm. as the top money grabbers to win Super Bowls at that particular time. So when you think about receivers, mm -hmm. Minnesota ain't, re they're not winning a Super Bowl right now in, in this current situation but their receiver's making $30-plus million. So you start to think about it, right? A.J. Brown was a high-paid receiver, but they didn't win the Super Bowl in Philadelphia. I'm talking about winning, Super Bowl-winning wide receivers. Well, that gets us to CeeDee Lamb, right? CeeDee Lamb wants to be paid top money. He you, wants you to gotta, make you gotta Justin pay him, Jefferson. Though. You got to pay him. There's nothing to even talk about. There's nothing to talk about. Here's the blueprint, Diana. I need to be paid. I need to be paid. If you paying him 100 guaranteed in whatever the final number is, we need to start there. That's just the, the, the conversation. DJ Moore just got $27 million. If you count DJ Moore's contract this year, plus the four-year extension, he'll make $90-plus million of guaranteed money over the next five years. I got to be paid more than that if I'm C.D. Lamb. There's a lot of people on the Cowboys that need to be paid. I, I, and, and, and speaking of a lot of people on the Cowboys need to be paid, Diana, are you hearing at all with owners, general managers, head coaches, feeling like the quarterback market continues to reset, that they will not be able to afford their quarterbacks in the future? Oh, poor, poor, poor teams making all this money. They can't afford yeah. anybody. I know we had Stephen Jones on Scoop City um, a week and a half ago. And look, he he laid it out, essentially saying what he's been saying to the media openly, which is we, we want we want all these guys to be Cowboys. But we have to do a bit of a Houdini act here, which, you know, you, the, the word Houdini, I thought was interesting. Right. Because the Houdini Houdini avoided. Right. <laughs> so who is he avoiding? Uh, and and I, I do think the one he's avoiding is Micah. I think Micah is going to have to wait. Um, I think that's going to be another can they kick down the road. Um, but, you know, he used the example of the Vikings uh, in terms of their roster. And, and, and when you pull up their their salary cap situation and the type of money that they're playing their players, uh, no one's making more than 20 mil there, right? And that's a deal that can get done. They can pay him the type of money because they're not, they're not stuck. And look, that's a little bit of Steven's excuse of, Hey, this is why we can't do it. And he's negotiating through us, right. In a way, right. He's trying to let their camp know like, Oh, we don't want to spend that money. But then on the other side, he has expressed uh, publicly and even on our show that he, he wants to get this deal done. Um, it was about a year ago, a little less than that. Um, I, I saw him at a league meeting and it was outside the hotel. And I just was like, Hey, come, go for a walk with me. I, I need, I need answers. I don't want to just guess on what you're doing with Dak. Is Dak the guy or not? Like, is he the guy on the record? Tell me right now. And I'm going to quote you. He said, he is the guy. He is our, he, Dak Prescott is a, is our Dallas Cowboy quarterback for the future. Mm -hmm. He is going to be our guy. Uh, so I, I revisited that conversation with them and said, do you still feel the same way? Right. Because obviously Dak is asking for money in the 60s. That, that's pretty apparent and and apparent just through listening to Jerry talking about the kind of money Dak is looking for, that it, it almost seems unrealistic or just too much money. Um, but at some point here, they're they're going to probably have to give in here and just do it and get the deal done. But but key, the thing that I was pushing him on and I didn't really get a great answer that, that I I know people in the league have asked 
me, and even I've had this conversation with other smart general managers and, and, and even people in scout departments and, and front offices of just, what's the philosophy in Dallas? They do the hard thing, right? They find the players, they draft these studs, but then come contract, it's always, we'll get to it. Yet you see their division foe, the Philadelphia Eagles, and to Howie's credit, is getting ahead of this. He's saving money. He's getting Devonta done. He's getting AJ done. Um, he got Jalen done, right? He 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 got ahead of it, so it's not such a um, debilitating number. So I, I'm not really sure what the business model he's following, but he obviously feels okay with it. Yeah, they, they look traditionally, historically, Keyshawn, Diana, they pay their players. The Cowboys aren't cheap. I don't know why people think that they're like cheap and they don't want to pay. They draft, like you said, they uh, get these guys to play at high levels. They go to Pro Bowls. They're all Pro's. They pay their players. Nobody necessarily walks out of the door on the Dallas. They pay them all. It's just the way that they go about doing it. And Jerry doesn't mind paying a little bit more by waiting. It takes two to tangle. They've had offers out to C.D. Lamb. But at the end of the day, C.D. Lamb is like, yo, I need to make this amount of money because you hear who what everybody else is making or potentially could be making in the marketplace. And so at that point, you're like, well, wait a minute, hold on. If y'all thinking Justin Jefferson is going to get this, or y'all thinking Brandon Ayuk or, or, or Devontae Adams or any of these top receivers are going to get this number, I personally feel I'm better than them for this team, so I need to wait to see what they're going to do, and I need to see what the actual contract looks like. What's the present value? Am I being paid in 12 months on my signing bonus? Or are you trying to stretch me out over the course of the contract? All of those sort of things. So it takes two to tangle. I'm never going to be one to say that the Dallas Cowboys don't like to pay because they do wind up paying. So, Diana – oh, go ahead. My, I was just going to ask Key real quickly. So, so do you think they're able to, to get CD and Dak done by the start of the season? Like, yeah, do you think absolutely, that, absolutely, 100%. CD, I, I feel the CD same Lamb will, I feel the same CD Lamb will be done. Proposals are in the offices of both of their representations of representatives. Now they just waiting on them to go back and forth, play the game, move some things around. That's all they waiting on. CD, the yeah. Dallas Cowboys will start off two and four without CD Lamb in the lineup. They might be Correct. one and five before the bye going to San Francisco <laughs> without CD Lamb in the lineup. We absolutely hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more from us, hit that subscribe button for all videos, full episodes, and exclusive content from the show. And don't forget, to find all facts, no breaks on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.